everyone, this is Madhubi Maraj and you are watching my YouTube channel Insani Pyaar which aims to invoke a little bit of humanity in all of us through awareness and understanding. So today I wanted to talk about something that I had um, watched on Thursday night. It was actually Friday first day, Friday night and the next day was Friday. So it was a debate between Arthur and Adam Green. Adam Green is an anti-Semite, in my opinion, very hardcore anti-Semite, although he insisted that he was just an anti-Zionist, which in my opinion is the same thing. Anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism is just the same thing. And if you think otherwise, I think you're confused. Anyway, that's another topic. So today I wanted to discuss in regards to, I have made the video in this, on this topic, like why the Jewish people call themselves as chosen people. But I think this version is more personal, personalized version. Um, although I had been thinking not to, dis not to talk about something um, very personal to me. And in regards to my um, story um, and my, um, what you can say, encounter and journey to J Judaism, which started um, at the Muslim Jewish Conference in 2011 in Kiev, Ukraine. So I was thinking to talk about it and then I used to convince myself, no, I shouldn't talk about something like that. But I think, I thought then when I watched this debate between Arthur and Adam Green, I thought, no, I think this is the right time to uh, talk about this and let the people know what my opinion as an, as a wannabe Jew who is born to Muslim parents and technically is a Muslim at this very moment as per the criteria of who is Muslim as per Islamic law shall i say so um anyway maybe many of the people don't agree with my description of me being uh, muslim frankly i don't care so um it i mean by and far it is like you have to say the shahada or you are born to muslim parents so i qualify in that but yes i have different opinions um in regards to quran in regards to the whole concept uh, of islam but never mind so today I'm going to discuss why and what exactly it means when we say the chosen people or why Hashem chose uh, the Jewish people out of all other people and what's so special about them. So I went to Muslim Church Conference in 2011 in Kiev and there I uh, encounter or shall I say I met this guy and i thought that i i fell in love with him for a very long long time and why i felt that is a very interesting co concept and in that concept lies the answer that why hashem chose the jewish people and not anyone or everyone else so one fine morning morning i wake up and i by the way this guy i only know his first name and the last name i don't even know his middle name i don't <laughs> i don't know nothing about him basically and he's married has children i wish him all the best he should be happy well, i have nothing to do with him right now but i'm just telling you this story because this is how i got my understanding of why jews are the chosen people so one fine morning, I woke up and I looked through a look through my window, and I see this man praying. And I stayed there, and I just I couldn't hear him from there. I could not hear him. I could not. It was not my bedroom, by the way. It was the lobby hall, and he was just playing. A praying outside and um, I, I just looked at him for quite some time and then I decided I should go out and see him there 
and I don't know why. It it was just like for me it was like I was just what it it, it was quiet and I was just watching someone pray. At that time I didn't know anything about Judaism. They did hand us some information that you know there are three prayers in 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 Judaism, so I said, okay, fine. Shia Muslims also pray three times because they unite two, uh, two of the prayers, Maghrib and Isha, and then and Zohar and Asr, and then there is this Fajr. Um, but there were there were a lot of uh, information that they gave us regarding Shabbos, regarding um a lot of stuff. And by the way, in that conference, um, the team, the Muslim Jewish Conference team, had decided not to talk about the Israel Palestine conflict. They were just like, okay, here are some bunch of Muslims and here are some bunch of Jews. You should get, and there were a few Christians there too. So it's like you get to know each other, you get to know about each other's uh, religious concepts. And there was this Shabbat and everything and everything. But this, I mean, this whole thing that I was like watching this guy pray stayed with me for a very long, long time. And when I, after after I came back from the Muslim Jewish Conference, a lot of people would say very negative things about Jewish people, and specifically to this person in that in the, in the context of this person, just to you know convince me that you know, woman, are you crazy? You're Muslim. How can you love a Jew? I mean, no, nobody loves Jews. Even Jews don't love themselves. So you are basically crazy and they're very wicked and weird people. And this this whole image of this guy praying would just come right in front of my eyes. And I would they would speaking they would keep keep on and continue speaking to me that they are this in the context of this guy. I mean, I don't even know his middle name and they think that they know him so well and they say he has drunk alcohol and he has slept with it and they are like this and he'd be like this and he would have just he just goes by on the road and he just likes a girl and he I mean like all the all the weird things and they would say you know you match up in you I mean you're a Pakistani what do you know you, you're nobody and he he would just sleep with you and and, and he didn't sleep with me <laughs> and it was like they would keep on saying negative things about me and I would just that image he praying would just go round and round and round in my eyes and I would just keep on thinking this guy was praying that morning he would be like that and I just cannot it was very difficult for me to reconcile that image and that that the description people would give me of him as a Jew so anyway that Sort of go and also this guy also um, led the Shabbat service. So there was no, <laughs> we did went to this one synagogue and met a rabbi and it was a wonderful gathering. But it was not Shabbat. So uh, the, oh, there was Shabbos in um, in that conference and this guy actually led the Shabbat service with all the guys. and by the way he was the only guy in the entire conference out of all the Jews he was the only guy who was wearing a kippah and I do remember gray kippah he used to wear it all the time also another kippah too he was like brownish kippah but I just distinctively remember that gray kippah which actually I really really liked and I actually wanted to, wanted to have that but I well, I never, thank God I didn't ask because it's, I mean, it's not good to take people's stuff. I mean, then they stay with you, you know, forever. So it's it's good that <laughs> I didn't ask and I didn't get. But anyway, that image of him praying used to come in front of my eyes every time anyone would say something really bad about him or Jews in general. And I thought and I thought and... I thought to myself, why do I think about him in that way? And it took me some time to realize, but I think it was a very beautiful image that this guy in this strange Ukrainian hotel, in this Muslim Jewish conference, wearing a kippah, he was not wearing a talat, he was wearing a talat inside, I think. There were 
strings. But he was not wearing any type of or anything. I could not hear what the words he was saying. Nothing I knew at that time. But he was praying, facing towards Zion, facing towards the Temple Mount, facing towards Jerusalem. He didn't care that there is no temple there. He didn't care that there is um, a tomb of rock there. He didn't care that there was there is this um, Church of Holy Disciplaca, whatever, whatever. He didn't care the temple was destroyed and burned. He didn't care that there is Al-Aqsa Mosque there. He didn't care what is there, why is there. There is no temple, there is no Messiah, there is nothing, nothing. He just woke up and he prayed facing into that direction of Jerusalem, Mount Zion, Zion that... Adam was talking about, I hate the concept of Zion and religiousifying the, the land, the this, I hate that. He hated that. That guy woke up, <laughs> said said the first Jewish prayer, Moda'ani, um, and then started Amida, which I know now is the standing prayer. And he was standing there praying, the first uh, prayer out of the three prayer, the Shacharit, as my rabbi has told me, Shacharit. And he was praying in that direction without caring about anything at all. Even if there was no wailing wall standing in Jerusalem, there was no kotal, even then I'm sure that guy would have faced into that direction in, and in his mind thinking about my Zion, and prayed to Hashem. And I wonder why. I mean, we Muslims also pray in front of the direction of Kaaba. But there is this Kaaba. There is this here. It, it's a Muslim Kaaba. It's a center of, of Islamic theology. We, we go for pilgrimage and smaller pilgrimages of Umrah and Hajj and whatever. But this guy... No offerings on Yom Kippur, no temple, no pilgrimage, nothing. But he's praying. He is standing there and he's praying. And one might wonder why. Is that land significant? But that land is corrupted, so to speak. There is this um, church which actually symbolizes, uh, you know, adultery in a way that you because you know Jews don't believe in the, the sculptures and and there is this Mary who um, the, the Mary the Virgin sculpture there in the cross and Jesus sculpture there so they're the not in around that site where he is facing there is this idol place there then there is this doom of rock which Jews have nothing to do and then there is this Al-Aqsa mosque they have nothing to do with that so that place that he's facing and praying is actually, in terms of Jewish uh, theology, is corrupted. But he's facing towards that direction. And in that corrupted dis d d direction, in that corrupted area, and he's praying to Hashem. As if Hashem <laughs> exists. So does Hashem exist there? No. Hashem said so, that you... Pray in that direction only. And he's praying. Why does he do it? Why is he doing that? That question bothered me a lot. What sort of faith is that? That he even, the land is corrupted. There is nothing there. Nothing Jewish there. But he still does that. One, because Hashem says, or Hashem told him and his ancestors to do that. Secondly, he's married. He's married to Hashem. And Hashem is married to him. So nothing changes that equation. Nothing changes his relationship. You can you can place a big idol of Trump or, or Shiva or I don't know, whatever you want. Or, or Muhammad bin Salman on, on, on that place. Even then he would be praying in that direction. It, it's like when... Abraham, when for the first time he, he left his homeland in Iraq or 
whenever he just left and he entered as Canaan and he was so scared and he was there. He told, and he, you know, when he went to Egypt also, he told the Egyptian king that, you know, Sarah is not my wife, she's my sister because he was just so scared. Then, okay, she, my wife, Sarah is very beautiful. And if I told everyone that I'm her husband, they will kill him and they will kill Abraham and then just take his wife because at that time it was very convenient to take somebody's life. All you have to do is just kill their husband. Now she's widow and you can just take the wife. So he says she's my sister. Does that change his relationship with Sarah? I mean, what if? Not what if. Actually, the Egyptian king spends a night with Sarah and it doesn't change the, the, the relationship. Even if somebody would have took Sarah and they would have violated her and, you know, whatever, it doesn't change the fact that Sarah is Abraham's wife and Abraham is Sarah's husband. They will still be married to each other. So that's that's the kind of relationship the Jewish people have with Hashem. And so far, what I have known and studied and heard many rabbis and people talk about Judaism and Jewish concept, if you ask me what is Judaism all about, I will tell you two things. Judaism is about two things only. One is marriage, two is food. Food comes first, then marriage. Or marriage comes first, and then food. I feel marriage comes first, and then food. Because, well, God <laughs> created Adam, and then he created Eve, and Eve was the one who went to the tree of knowledge, picked up the fruit, eat herself, and then give it to her husband. And then we ended up here on earth. So marriage and food are the only... Judaism is all about marriage and food. The rest is commentary. <laughs> commentary around food and marriage. So, yeah, that these are the only two things that define what Judaism is. And it starts with these two things. Married, Demi Adam uh, and Kava, and then, uh, you know, it was Noah and his wife and his son, and then, you know, it's Sarah and, uh, you know, Abraham, and then, then again, it's Isaac and Rebecca, and then it's Yaakov and Rachel and Leah. It's all about that. And then lentil soups and cook me a meal and I will bless you. So, I mean, so yeah, I mean, I when I looked at that man praying, I mean, it was as if going to a very beautiful wedding where the groom and the bride look so beautiful and you are this guest who is a friend of I don't know the bride or or bridesmaid or you just you just came with the with some of the bridesmaid as as a you know a, as a couple or someone who doesn't know the bride or groom and you look at the bride and groom so happy so into each other and this beautiful wedding and you take a deep breath and you just say, oh my God, I just want to marry this bride. Or I just want to marry that girl. But, they, you know, they're married. It's their marriage. It's their thing. But it's just so beautiful and so radiant and so out there that you actually also want that. I felt exactly the same. I looked at that man and I say, oh my God, so beautiful, so handsome, so amazing. I want to marry him. And I, I, well, I, this is the man I want to get married to and have children with. But it was not about me and him. It was not about how I feel about him or how he feels about me or whatever. Or, or this. It was much more than that. It was like, here's a guy who loves Hashem so much that he has took time out of this conference 
and he is looking into that direction and i was in that conference confused and i why am i here they're not even talking about israel palestine they're not even talking about that conflict they're not they were they were just like okay is islam is about this judaism is about this we don't have a conflict we just love each other so much this is a kumbaya meeting and it was it was just amazing by the way it was not that bad um i think i i've been to muslim church conference in 2016 too but i think one of the very best conferences that muslim church conference had pull up or put up was none other than the second annual muslim church conference in kiev ukraine in 2011 and i've seen the pictures of other conferences and i don't see i think that was the best conference ever maybe i was in no but, but for me it was very impactful it was very spiritual it was it 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 was hardcore it was hardcore and i mean for many of people oh by the way go check it out um on on the facebook uh, i was i used to be on facebook but i'm not but and um, and don't intend to be there so yeah and there is this page called muslim church conference and if you go there and if you click on the photos so click on the photos of 2011 kiev ukraine second annual muslim church conference and you would actually find a picture of this guy praying so yeah you go check it out and maybe you would be able to see that how how that is many of the people or you know the people that i've shown uh, a lot of lot of friends of mine who i thought were highly anti semites i showed them this picture so you see i went to this muslim church conference and here's a guy who was just so like us a normal human being i fell in love with him and i i, I don't think he's a very bad person or evil person like adam green said we were just source of all oh my god i went to his the link that was given below in the description i went on and watched his videos i was like oh my god i had a migraine no i don't i didn't even had a migraine i had a full headache and i cried and i i can't even tell you how my shabbat was it was like oh my god i was i was terrible that how can some people would have that mentality and i like to put, point out here that when people say i'm not an anti semite i don't hate jews i just hate the 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 concept of this chosen people and and this um this this land belonging to one people It, it's like um i don't hate i don't hate women i just i just don't understand why you would have to marry this one woman in the world and why why not everyone else or anyone else or my sister or my daughter it's not like that you know i i sometimes wonder that Hashem wanted to see me wanted me to see this image of him praying just to know that you see this this is why i have chosen him for me as a chosen person because we're married nothing nothing affects him i mean you can have alaksa you can destroy the temple you can do but he would still be married to me he would still face in that direction and he will pray because he is married to me looking at that man and feeling that feeling to want him as i want him as someone to to get married to actually made me realize i mean that would the what kind of relationship hasham has with him and i used to pray a lot for this guy and it was very strange that whatever i used to pray for him used to come true and i used to get to see actually that it, whatever i have prayed for him has 
has come true. And I used to say, how how does how can that happen? I prayed something and it came true. And Hashem made sure that I get to know that this has happened. You prayed for him and I have given him this. And look at this. That was like as if God was saying to me, Major Bean, you see, you love him. I love him too because I'm married to him and he's married to me. So it was not my relationship with him, but it was rather my relationship with Hashem. You see, you, you want, we need to understand that although Hashem loves his people, loves and chooses chooses him but he also chose me to witness that what he has with him is unique and what he has with me is also unique in a different way and then many of the girls my friends and you know people were asking what what is so special about him i mean does he wear this Gray keeper that makes him special. I mean, there there are many other Jewish men in that conference. There were many Muslim, great Muslim men out there, good looking, great. I mean, nice, amazing Muslim men there. A lot of Pakistani Muslim men were there. What's so special in that? In in this guy, that I I I say that I love him. I, I mean, what's so special in about him? And I would say nothing. Nothing is so special about him. It's it's that aura that surrounded him, made him this very handsome. It was not his blonde hairs or his blue eyes or whatever, whatever. It was that aura that surrounded him. That that holy relationship, that holy matrimonial kind of relationship that he had with Hashem made him this very unique person that I felt attracted to. I mean, there were all other men. There was this other guy who was, his name was Eunice. His name is Eunice. <laughs> he's, a, he's a wonderful, wonderful person. He sang for us on, on Shabbat. Yeah, he sounded for us. It's a beautiful voice, beautiful voice. He was from Vienna. He is from Vienna. His name is Jonas. He was a convert to Islam. Again, blue eyes, very blonde hair, very good looking. But no, he didn't have that aura. Not that he doesn't have that. I mean, a relationship with Hashem. He also has a relationship with Hashem and Allah. But that, that is something else. This guy, this guy was like, I mean, like I said, this Eunice looks towards Kaaba and there is this Kaaba and there is this whole, everything is there. Everything Muslim Islamic is there. It's concrete. But for this guy, nothing is there. There is no temple. There is no high priest. There is nothing. There is this one wall. But like I said, even if there was no hotel, no wall, this guy would have been facing towards Zion and praying. And this aura that surrounded him with this intense faith literally made me understand what it means to be like, Hashem will walk with you. <laughs> Hashem will walk with you. Hashem was walking with him on his right hand. And that created an amazing aura of, of what we say is beauty. But it's not beauty. It's something something so deep that we don't even, I don't even understand. I, for seven years, for seven years, I was intoxicated with this image of him praying. You talk about meth cocaine, <laughs> ganja and nirvana, whatever. How long they you, you stay intoxicated with alcohol, with nirvana or whatever, whatever, whatever. 48 hours, 72 hours, 36 hours, 24 hours. I stayed intoxicated with that one image 
of one chosen people, one chosen guy praying to Hashem in this weird Ukrainian hotel. That image stayed with me like an intoxication for seven years. Seven years. On and on. And I would just go into some weird state that how can and it would just affect me so much when people would say Jews are like that Israel is this and oh my god those wars the 2014 wars oh they are this there was this Palestinian guy that I met in Karachi he was actually from Gaza he would send me picture of kids died evil people satanic oh my god what not and money and I would just think about this guy who was praying in this Ukrainian hotel. And Hashem was telling me, he's married to me, I'm married to him, why don't people understand that? Uh, remind, you know what? People like Adam Green remind me of this Shakespearean play, I think it was Shakespeare or Hamlet, I don't know, I don't exactly remember. So I was not very good at these chaotic and English literature classes when I was in my 12th grade. I hated them. So most of the time we were backbenchers and there was this big window <laughs> on the chairs that we used. So we used to sneak out and then we, we had this, it was an all girls college. So we went, we used to, the couple of us, we used to sneak out and we used to play basketball there. So it was fun. I bunked most of my English literature classes, thank God. Thank God for that. <laughs> Literally. So there was this weird prey and later on there was it was another movie was also made um, about this play, I think. It was Hamlet or I don't know. I mean I never understood these like, you know, poetic people. Unless it's like Psalms and David the poet, the prophet poet. <laughs> That him I understand. I like that dude. <laughs> so uh yeah, so in that play is like two friends. Actually there are three friends, like two males and one girl. And there is like this there the two males, I think one was black, like African black, and the one is the other one is white, and then the both the white and the black uh, males fell in love with this one girl who is white and then the the woman actually loves the black guy and then the white guy is like no she should choose me for because you know it's it's like you i mean of all the girls in the whole world world the black okay the black guy likes the girl the girl likes them so they have this equation going on which is like equal one the right hand side and the left hand side is equal mathematically so you know that that is like one equation but the other guy the third guy he wants that girl specifically out of all the other guys. So fine, the girl is not interested. She is interested in your friend. Go find another one. No, he specifically likes that girl. She wants, he also wants that girl. Irrespective of whatever is going on between the two of them, his friend and the girl. He wants that girl. I think that is what Gentiles looked like to me this is what i uh, <laughs> i was seeing myself that guy is married to hashem and hashem is married to him and all i want is that i want that guy <laughs> and i was like no and hashem was like honey and hashem was like talking to me and saying no no honey my relationship my and your relationship is a different relationship he has a relationship with me and i want you to see that and, and and this is how, this is what it is, how to be the chosen people of me. I, I chose him. There's nothing special about him. It's just I chose him. That's, that's it. And in, in that play, in the Shakespearean play, it's like, I'm white, you're white. Why do you like the black guy? I mean, I mean it, it's, it's... Or, or I will give you another example. <laughs> so, Jacob has two wives. Leah and Rachel. 
So both are his wife, but he loves Rachel. Why? You might say she is the older sister. She is the first wife. You accepted the marriage, Jacob. So why are you discriminating Rachel and Leah? Why do you love Rachel more than Leah? And Jacob would probably would not have the answer. He would just say, "I don't know. She was my soulmate, maybe." But if you ask me, the one of you who is technically a Muslim, yet, and not yet a Jew. The way I see it is this naiveness and this, this beauty that Rachel has inherently, which just, which just makes Yaakov more than a husband. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's like it's like Rachel knows that her father is going to trick Yaakov to marry his elder sister, and she says, and and then Yaakov and Rachel say, okay, fine, I'll give you these signs, and if if it's you, you show me this sign, so I'll know it's you, and if you are unable to, you know, show me. I'll see. Okay, this is your sister Leah, and I would just in the middle of the marriage marriage ceremony, I would just you know ask your father. Sorry, you're tricking me because this is not Rachel. This is Leah because obviously the bride's face is covered in in the traditional Orthodox Jewish um, marriages, and that that thing is now changed. That the groom actually puts a veil on the bride, so that you know. From onwards, Jewish men are not tricked into marrying someone they don't want to get married. But I mean, and then Rachel just give gives those signs or those you know things to her elder sister Leah. So not only Laban, Jacob's uncle, tricked her. The, the woman that he loved also sort of tricked her, tricked him into marrying Leah. <laughs> and when then he just realizes Leah, yeah, you know, after, I mean, the next morning, she says, okay, fine, it's, you married my sister, and we both, me and my father, tricked you into marrying her. And then Yaakov says that I, I want to marry Rachel too. And he said, okay, fine, you marry Rachel too. again he also I mean it's not like that he didn't accept it Leah it's you know as a wife he did but he loves Rachel Leah knows it Laban knows it Rachel knows it so Gentiles also have a marital relationship with Hashem but it's not Rachel it's Leah and remember, Rachel, Rachel has problems having children. Leah has all the children she wants. And even then, she is not happy. <laughs> so funny. So it's, you know, this relationship. And I mean, I, I know Adam Green loves Esau so much. I tell you what Esau would have done in this situation. Just imagine, instead of Yaakov, it was Isa. So Isa would have, first of all, when early in the morning, he would have realized it's not Rachel. He probably would have beat the hell out of Leah and probably killed her. And then he would have went to his uncle and killed him too. How dare you try to trick me? You think that I'm stupid? And look at this macho body. And how dare you? And <laughs> I mean... He wouldn't even go there of marriage and seven years of labor. No, no, no. He's one of those guys who would have spotted Rachel, beautiful young lady, who is fair and with big eyes. Uh -huh. and he would have just said, woman, in my tent in two minutes and you better start stripping. I ain't doing any seven years labor and then asking for the... No, he was not that type. He was just, he was, you know, one of those, okay, the nice girl, us. Pick him up like Osho and all those people would have just suggested. It's a natural 
inclination, pick up the girl, and there we go. He was like that. It was, it was Yaakov. He said, okay, fine, uncle, you tried to trick me. Yeah, I labored in your house for seven years. Your elder daughter then got any proposal in those seven years. Obviously, it would have been disgusting for you or disgraceful for you to you know, not marry your elder daughter. So fine, you have given me your elder daughter. Now give me the second elder because, you, because I love her. Yeah, I want her too. And then, I mean, it's obvious that, you know, it, it, I mean, he is a good husband. He buried Leah right in the, in the cave of the matriarch where, you know, Abraham and, and Sarah is buried and Isaac and Rebecca is buried. He was scared of his forefathers knowing that he had two wives. And he just took Leah there and buried Rachel on the, on the road. She's the one who was sacrificing. And that's why the Jewish people are sacrificing from your hunger. And you just, I mean, I, I just, what pisses me off and what makes me angry is when, you know, we Gentiles said, we are bad because of the Jews. We are bad. We are sinful because of the Jews. In his video, he said, that, you know, he, he, Jews are the ones who made up Christ to make us evil people. Jews own the world and that's why there is poverty. They own all, all the banks. Rothschild owns all the banks. I don't know who Rothschild is. I mean, they're not even practically religious. I, I strongly believe so. Maybe they are. I don't even know what the Rothschild I really have to Google them. They own the banks, they own the media, they own the and we still hate them. They control our brain, but still they, they can't control our heat. We have that. So our sins, our poverty, our everything is because of the Jews. You know, it reminds me of Leah. When Reuben, her son, comes to give, Hey mommy, I went you know, playing outside. I found these lovely flowers for you. And she's like, her sister comes in. out of you. Can I have some of these flowers? And she, oh. And then she reacts as if like she has asked something. It's just flowers. And she says, nice flowers. Give me one or two flowers. She says, you took my husband. You took that. You know what I mean? She starts complaining. That's the reason, <laughs> that is the reason Hashem doesn't like us, the Gentiles. We just don't stop with our complaining. She is the one who got married first with the cooperation of her, her, her father and her own sister who knew that the man loves actually her and not her elder sister. She cooperated. She, so she married, Leah married, <laughs> Rhea married, Yaakov with the help of Rachel and here she is with I mean with a bunch of flowers she's complaining that how dare you took my husband Leah you took her to be husband she was engaged to him not you it, it, it's that I mean I'm not saying Leah it's also <laughs> a Jewish matri a patri a matriarch sorry <laughs> Leah is also, Leah is, is actually the Jewish matriarch and, and it's, it's, but it, it, this, this story, which is at the center of Torah and, you know, all these commentaries and people talk, this is the longest, um, no, actually the longest story is, I think, Joseph's, yeah, Joseph's, yeah remembering sorry but joseph and yeah it, it's like an extension of this yaakov um rachel and leah saga which goes on to to egypt and then exodus starts and whatever whatever but you know that, that generally what, what i'm trying to say is that this this whole story is a very significant story i mean sarah's story is also very significant Isaac and Rebecca's story is a, a, a bit shorter, but this story is very long. And there is a reason, there has to be a reason for it. For not just Jews, but for also Gentiles. 
So I feel, you know, one of my rabbis <laughs> one day said that, you know, and I was, I was like, you know, but you Jews are married to Hashem. So that's why you have this exclusive relationship with Hashem. And he was like, why, why do, he is a Jew. And I, <laughs> I'm not the Jew. I want to be Jew. But almost, I mean, I'm telling him, but you were married to Hashem. That's why you have this exclusive relationship with Hashem. And he is the one saying, but you know, Hashem could have, you know, many <laughs> wives. Why this exclusive, exclusive relationship? Why only Jews are married? But I think it symbolizes the relationship of Yaakov with his two wives, Rachel and Leah. So Christians and Muslims would be like Leah. <laughs> be like Leah. Christians and Muslims are like Leah. God is like married to them too, but he doesn't really like that relationship because it's just like, oh my God. Leah is not... Please, all those rabbis listening to me, don't sue me. I mean, I'm not even a convert yet. <laughs> so, yeah, technically, I can say whatever. And thank God, Baruch Hashem, I am living in Pakistan. So no one can, you know, <laughs> literally sue me uh, in, in, in the light of describing the Jewish concept very strangely. But, you know, the relationship that Yaakov has with Ra- Rachel is somewhat the marital relationship between Hashem and the Jewish people because Yaakov just chose Rachel. He is tricked into <laughs> marrying Leah, that is Christianity and Islam, but he loves Rachel. And no, can, no one can replace that. You know, it, it's like Hashem would have a relationship with me and I was like focusing on this guy and I didn't realize that this guy was praying to Hashem and they had this relationship and that made him this beautiful attractive and I thought oh my god I want this I actually didn't understand that I wanted that sort of relationship where you know nothing matters you just feel that you're you're married you're connected that's it you it doesn't matter if there is temple there or not. You're married. That that's the home where the spirit of God lives, Mount Zion. So yeah. And you were Rachel's naiveness is something that that Yaakov just totally loves. I mean, she is like, she is okay with Leah marrying Leah, his, her elder sister marrying Yaakov first and having children and all that. But she still wanted to be with Yaakov because she loves her sister, elder sister, just like the Jewish people. They don't hate Christians and Jews, oh, Muslims. Jews, I don't think Jews hate Christians or Muslims. I don't think Ilya Sarkozy and all those people at MGC would hate Muslims and then they would organize Muslim Jewish conference just to get to know each other. No. It's us Muslims and the Christians, we hate Jews. Just like Leah is jealous and she hates her younger sister for also marrying Yaakov. I mean, this is how she complains when the Duderim incident happens. The wild flowers the Reuben brings for Leah. She is the one complaining. Why do you have to marry my husband? I was married to her. You should have just refused. But why would Rachel refuse? It was, I mean, Yaakov asked Rachel to marry her. And and he talked to Laban, their, their father, that would you please give me the hand of Rachel? And I will work for you for seven years. And now here, Leah is complaining to her younger sister, why did you have to marry my husband? Rachel never said to Leah, why do you have to marry my fiancé? She just gave him the sign and said, you're fine. I, I, yeah, I know. It will be very disgraceful for my father to you know, see the younger daughter getting married first and the elder daughter is just sitting at home. So I don't want you to be jealous. Go on. 
marry my fiancé and then I'll marry him again. <laughs> and now here is Leah. She is the one who is complaining. Despite the fact she has sons, she has children from Jacob, not Rachel. She has, she is the one who has the most children with Jacob. In fact, even the con the, the 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 concubines should I say concubines or or whatever the the those uh Bella and Selva they also have like two sons before Rachel Rachel has Yosef and Benjamin and Benjamin literally killed her as in giving birth to Benjamin she literally dies and even then she is the why would Yaakov love Rachel really. Really, are we? I mean, Muslims and Christians should be the last people saying anything anti-Semitic or anything bad about Jews because, hello, it's because of Judaism and because of Jews that we have gotten our religions, whether it's Christianity or Islam. And I, I really don't understand. I think... Adam Green is more like a pagan or something because he believes in these European gods like Zeus or whatever. But, I mean, come on. Read Zeus. Re read how Greeks and Romans have created havoc in this world. I mean, they were not nice people. You talk about the satanic church or satanic what, what was synagogue or whatever. Please. Greeks literally chopped young men that were good looking. They would have chopped their testicles and used them for sexual objects. Not just women. That 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 is entire. I mean, they were they were just like ass up. Just go into the world. You like a girl? Just pick it her, pick it, pick her up, and make her a wife. And the church, yeah, yeah. I, this is why I meet my new wife. I just found her from when looking so hot. In this really sunny day, I just picked her up as my wife. I mean, literally, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I appreciate, I mean, literally, Isaac, oh, Isaac went blind. That I, I mean, I, God said, I will take your eyes. I don't want you to see what your son is doing. <laughs> so you just go blind. <laughs> and in that blindness, the poor guy was trying to bless him. I mean, look, imagine if the blessing of Isaac went, went to Asaph. He would just go on conquering lands and picking up girls from and killing Giselles. Who kills Giselles? <laughs> Seriously. As if tigers, hyenas, coyotes, wolves were not enough out there in the wild to kill those poor gazelles. Here comes this big Asaph with his bows and arrows and whatnot and whatnot hunting gazelles. Who, who kills gazelles? I love gazelles. <laughs> Gazelle bron bronchoid? Bro bronchoid? I don't know. This is a model. Victoria Sigma. Her also. But you know, gazelles generally, the, you know, those wild gazelles. Yeah, they're called gazelles, I think. <laughs> My English is not that good. But they were like really cute creatures. I mean, they're big eyes. <laughs> Kind of remind me of Rachel, big guys and stuff. Who kills them and then bakes them or cooks them up and eats them? I mean, goats, you can do that. I mean, those are for ducks and goats and chicken. But Giselle? No. <laughs> you know, I mean, you see, Asif is a wild man. He loves jungle. He loves this hunting and this whole animalistic idea. The blessing that Isaac is giving to his eldest son with, in the hopes that it will tame him down and make him a good, righteous sadakim, a good person. And that blessing is not for wild areas. It should, I mean, see the concept of Rivka. She is not the one who is blind and she is seeing what Asif is doing. She realizes that this, this powerful blessing will go 
wasted if given to this person who spends most of his time in jungles. She knows that this blessing is for the tents, for food, for lentil soup, and for a man who stays and spends time at home cooking lentil soup. Lentil soups are really delicious. I love them. Better than meat. <laughs> Dal makhani <laughs> is the best of all the lentil soups. Please, let's do not underestimate the Asian Asian cuisine of dal makhani. It's like lentils cooked with butter. We do it very well in Asia, the subcontinent. So yeah. Rivika knew that that blessing was for home, for family, for, for the developers of the tent who understands women, who just doesn't go out picking up women and, you know, whatever, doing. And this, this, is, not, this is not an attitude which is healthy. No, no, sir, no. <laughs> I mean, look at him. He handled his mother. He listens to his mother. I mean... And nobody understands Rivika's pain, how painful it is for her. She thought that I have two sons and my brother has two sons. My two sons will marry my brother's two daughters. And Leah was crying her hearts out. I don't want to marry this weird wild man, <laughs> Asil. So she ends up marrying Yaakov. So yeah, this is not... I mean, Rebecca can't even say to, I mean, her being, being the wife and being a mother, it's, it's a very difficult situation. She can't even say to Isaac that, you know, Yaakov is my side of the family and Esau is your side of the family. If she would have said that, Isaac would have said, hello, honey, we're first cousins. <laughs> it's our, our family is literally one family. We're just cousins. So it's a very difficult situation for Rebecca. Okay, so this also also this chosen people concept is it's, it's a very feminine concept. It was Sarah who saw how Ishmael was violently beating somebody or having unnatural intimate relationship with someone and she didn't want Isaac to be like that. So she said and he has to go away. He can't live here to share the inheritance or it's not about the inheritance it's about the legacy yeah abraham's legacy is not killing people and no 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 <laughs> no 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 it, it's not like that it, it's a marital relationship you know and that can only go on with somebody like yakov not esau because esau would just simply kill Leah and Laban and then take Rachel or just don't even ask Laban for the hand of Rachel. He would just pick Rachel up and then just, yeah. Which is not a very appropriate thing to do, I must say. But it was Yaakov who said, I would, you know, I would please give me the hand of your daughter. I will work for you. And he is. And then he got cheated. And even then he works another seven years for Raka. So, you know, I, I, I mean, for, at least I can say <laughs> that, you know, the relationship that Jewish people have with Hashem is... The same marital relationship that Yaakov has for Rachel. It's a difficult, <laughs> struggling relationship, but it's a very intimate and close relationship. And the relationship that Hashem has for maybe Muslims and Christians is more like Leah. They're married, but they're not actually into each other. <laughs> Let's just say that. And then the rest of the rest of the world is like Bela and Zafla. Yeah, it's like that. And also, why by Jacobson explained this concept very good. I will put his um, 
explanation is linked in the description box. And I hope, Adam Green, you get to learn Judaism from a different perspective and different angle. Try to listen to rabbis like a Rabbi Father Jacobson, his brother Simon Jacobson. They talk a lot about Kabbalah and everything and everything. You need to listen to them. I'll put the links of their videos. Do check them out. Rabbi Menes Friedman is a great, great rabbi. But you need to have a certain amount of spirituality to actually understand Rabbi Menes Friedman. So be really careful with that. Rabbi David Solomon, again, amazing. And there are so many, so many other. Um, I think there is this Rabbi Tovia. I'll put the links in the description. Go check them out. They're amazing. Please, go check them out. You will like them. And I hope you change your perspective. Thank you.